Hello everyone and welcome. I haven't posted a video in a while and I thought this would be a really good opportunity because some friends of mine and I are launching a Kickstarter for our latest comics anthology. Uh, we're called Let's Make Comics. We are a Chicago-based collective of comics artists from all walks of life and every year we put together an anthology. This year the theme is This Makes Me Sad and it's a really fun uh, mix of different approaches to that theme. Uh, some of which are sadder than others. Uh, mine in particular is honestly not very sad at all. I kind of uh, took an ironic turn on it. I made a short comic called Star Sacrifice uh, featuring a superhero character. It's the first time I think I've done superheroes in any serious way since I was probably 12 or 13 uh, when I kind of tapered off from my childhood obsession. Uh, so it was really fun to revisit it, uh, especially with a kind of humorous approach. And I really like the protagonist that I created. She still has no name. I thought it would be fun to do a gouache painting of her uh, with some nice detail and um, really vibrant colors, uh, especially because the comic that is in the anthology is black and white. So this is her first appearance in color. And while I was at it, I thought I could make it into a bit of a tutorial because this was actually a really good learning experience for me. I don't typically do a lot of character work in gouache. I usually use gouache for landscapes and um, more forgiving subjects. I find that uh, doing portraits, people, uh, cartoony characters can be tough in gouache. Uh, so I found a few interesting techniques in the course of making this that I'd really like to share. So I hope this will inspire you to try it with your own character or uh, someone else's character if you're doing fan art. So the number one step I would recommend is doing a good thumbnail and color study before you would put any paint on the paper. Uh, in my case I did it digitally, I used Procreate on an iPad Pro, but in your case maybe that's colored pencils or watercolors or even gouache if you want to just do a preliminary study, but just whatever medium is the most comfortable for you, spend some time in that. Even though gouache is pretty forgiving and easy to correct mistakes with, Something like changing the entire color scheme of your piece can be really difficult once you've gotten into the thick of it. Tip number two, make sure you have enough room for your entire character uh, before you start putting any detail in. You probably want to do this before you even start sketching out your character. Just get a sense of where your, the top of your character's head is and where the bottom of their foot is. Uh, so you can make sure they fit entirely on the page. I end up with a lot of compositions where uh, my character is just a little bit cut off at the edge and it you th always think you can get away with it, and you really can't. It never looks intentional. Um, and in the case of a superhero, you really want to show their entire form, because uh, it's all about the drama of their pose, and you don't get that as much if they're cut off. Once you know that size and shape of your character, you can go in and fill out their uh, initial pose with a nice light pencil sketch. And try to keep the pose very dynamic. I try to use very loose lines at first, really get that feel for uh, how the character's positioned. I like to start personally with um, the torso and the legs first and kind of figure out the uh, arms and head at the end, but that's just my own personal preference. Superheroes are all about big dramatic poses, so getting this right early on is very important. I'd also really recommend when you have a pencil sketch that you're pretty happy with, uh, pick it up and hold it up to a mirror and maybe turn it upside down as well. Just get a good look at it with fresh eyes and this is a good way to find out early on that you might have made some mistakes in the proportions or the character looks a little flat and not as three-dimensional as you want and you can fix them easily now in pencil before you start getting into the paint. The next step I would recommend is picking a really strong light source. Uh, this is how you get those nice dramatic shadows. Superheroes are all about that drama and you definitely get the most drama out of this kind of image with one really strong prominent light source lighting the character. It also helps you draw the character a little bit more simply um, because you can use those shadows to uh, cover up some of their details, for one thing, uh, but it also helps establish their shape in a really clear way. I would always make sure to add one additional light source coming from the opposite angle uh, so that their shadowed side gets a little bit of a highlight. You'll see in this case, I have this really strong light source coming from the super-powered key that is levitating above her hand, and that's that primary light source, but I also have this kind of somewhat more subtle uh, kind of aqua blue glow uh, that's coming from uh, an invisible light source off to the upper left. And that helps draw a nice light outline against that shadowed side of her so that you can clearly see her against the background. So once you've picked your light source and you've started uh, adding a little bit of detail there, you can start rendering your character uh, with the shadows first. I find this is really a great way to build up that three-dimensional form early on and it helps 
keep you from covering up your pencil marks entirely uh, because most of your details are going to be defined by these shadows once your pencil marks are invisible under the paint. So if you start out uh, just filling in all of the colors first, uh, flat, and then adding detail on top of that, you might find that you've lost your sketch and you kind of have to improvise from that point on, unless you're working really transparently. In this case, I'm using uh, not just straight black for the shadows, but I'm mixing it up with a little bit of the blue and the purple paint that I'm using for that background. Even though my primary light source here has a yellow cast to it, I'm leaving the highlights completely white. And that's partly because working in gouache, it's hard to get very dark tones for the shadows. So having very light blown out highlights can help counteract that and make the darks seem darker than they actually are. So once you're finished with the shadows, you can move on to the mid-tones. And this is where I start introducing the main color of each part of her costume. In most places, I'm painting the color directly over the shadow. And since the gouache reactivates once it gets wet again, those dark shadow tones will blend into the color that I place on top and give me a slightly nicer, smoother transition between the two. try to keep the background heavier on the mid-tones. Uh, you want your character in the foreground to have the darkest darks and the lightest lights, and also the most eye-popping colors, and that's gonna help them stand out a lot, which is, again, important for that iconic superhero look. You want the background to look far away and a little bit less important, and if it has less contrast and a simpler color scheme, that will automatically help it recede a bit and make the character feel more like they're right in front of you. So at this point I can go back and start really filling in the details and kind of getting to the, the finishing touches of the painting. And what I like to do is rather than try to focus on adding detail everywhere, uh, you know, adding every little strand of hair, every little bit of texture on the costume, every little shadow on the face, just pick a few key spots and really focus a lot of detail on those, uh, particularly areas where there's a transition from a lot of light to a lot of dark. So this will be the edges of the character's silhouette, and uh, the spots where you move from a highlight to a shadow. And if you focus your detail there, then the eye will sort of fill it in in the rest of them, and you don't need to go over them and add this massive amount of really minute texture, uh, which can sometimes work against you if you try to do that, because you'll start reducing the contrast of the character and making their overall form less clear if you're not careful. Superheroes have always been about simplicity and iconography over minute detail, I feel, and I think that's their strength. So when you're rendering a superhero, it's okay to just make them look very stark and simple and very striking. And as you're finally wrapping things up, you probably are going to notice that since you're working in gouache, it's looking a lot lighter than you want it to. So don't be afraid to just keep layering on the darks. You'll see that I'm adding more and more to the shadows. I'm even just using straight black paint sometimes, which I know I said not to do, but I find with gouache, if you really want that uh, high contrast look, it's almost impossible to avoid just using a lot of black. This isn't really a specific superhero thing, but one of the techniques I really enjoy doing in gouache is uh, using this little finger flicking technique in order to make stars in the background. You basically just uh, load up your brush with some very uh, watered down white paint, make sure it's like as liquid as possible, or it'll kind of stick in weird ways. And then you just kind of run your finger along the edge. Um, you definitely want to practice this a bit on just some scratch paper first before you do it on a fi finished piece because understanding the angle and where the paint's going to go uh, takes some getting used to. But it's a really great way to get that randomness and to fill in a lot of area very quickly. And then you can go back over with a brush and uh, make some larger stars in particular areas that you think need a little bit of extra light. 
And with that, we have our superhero painting. I hope you enjoyed this. And I really hope you'll consider backing the Let's Make Comics This Makes Me Sad Kickstarter. I'll uh, be sure to include a link below in the description. Some of the artists involved are offering custom artwork on some of the higher uh, backer tiers, and that includes me. I'm going to be offering a custom animated pixel graphic uh, along the lines of these. So I highly encourage you to check it out. Thank you very much.